It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Welcome to The B Show. I am your host, Deborah Voltaire Coulange. I'm not sure if you can see, but on the bottom of my the screen, hopefully it'll show up when I talk to someone else, my name change has, it's like there. It's no longer Carl Coulange, it's The B Show. For all the people that hit me up, like, why does it say Carl? Let me tell you why. I, like, we didn't even get to say, hi, how are you? Like, let me tell you why. Because I refuse to pay for Zoom when I have someone who pays for it. It's not tricking if you got it, right? So why am I going to pay for my name to be changed when Carl Kwanch pays for it? Like, that's how the rich get richer. Hello. But we found out that we could just change the title. So for everyone who hit me up and was highly an- annoyed by that, um, we took care of it. Anyway, welcome to episode 203 of The B Show. We are at the end of February. Um, I can't believe we're about to hit one year since we've been home since COVID. Like, that's all that I keep thinking about. Like, I've been home for a year. When this first started, my coworkers and I and, and Carl and I were like, yo, we're going to be home. We're going to be chilling like it's gonna be fabulous times like and literally I think two three weeks into it it was like death after death after death after death and as you all know as I said numerous times my grandmother was one of them um and I had everyone I think I like caught it it was like and to this day thank you god um I have I I went and got tested last week because I had a horrible sinus infection and I was like, this is it. The day of the Gitchy is here. (laughs) Rona has knocked on my door. Um, I could like barely smell. I could still taste, but I was tired. And I was just like, I just don't feel well. And we went away and I'm like, this is what happened when we went away. But no, just a sinus infection. But for anyone who has taken that test numerous times from my healthcare workers, Yo, I'll give you so much credit because the man, okay, I was late and I think he was annoyed that I was late because I don't think, I know he told me, I have to put back my hazard suit. Like if you have a time, be there. Like I said, I'm one of those people who were late. It is what it is. I arrive, I'm here. I may be late, but I'm here. Um, So anyway, we arrived, I arrived, and he told me his whole spiel, and I think because he was mad at me, he stuck that mf -er so far up my nose, yo, I saw stars, and then I kind of, like, flinched, like, you know, like, wait, what, and um, (laughs) I saw, I thought he would be, like, done with this nose, and he'll go to the next nose, no, why did Dr. Lou, go in the other one, back again, and then this one. But um, yeah, I got a call back in two days and told I was negative. And like my mom said, voila, I am still not back to normal, but it felt good to know that that wasn't um, Rona knocking. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, don't come at this door. I don't got nothing to give to you. Like this is a foreclosure house. There's no furniture. There's nothing, boo. On to the next. Well, Hopefully it's not on to the next person that I know. And um, now we're just waiting to find out when we could take the vaccine. Um, someone I know, Carl, is has to take it and he kind of doesn't want to, but uh, I told him in order for him to go back to his little com- compa parties, if you don't know, that means it's Haitian parties, he's got to get the vaccine. Like if you want to have all of you and your homies, and by homies, I mean strangers, because no one he knows goes to them. And if you and your homies want to, you know, dance and sweat and like in Haitian world, they call it like a T-chien, which means a little dog because he's like this close. Like you can see all my pores. That's how close he is to the musician. Um, If you want to do that, I'm sorry, bro. You definitely going to need to um, get that vaccine. So that's that. Today... It's going to be a fun, fun show. I'm so excited. Um, If you didn't watch the promo, how dare you? Like, what are you doing with your life? 
I have the sibling Sore with me. They are brother and sister. And I just want to know first, like, how is it to work with your sibling? Me and my sister are super close. We are peanut butter and jelly, crazy glue and gorilla glue. <laughs> and um, it's hard to separate us, but I couldn't work with her. We were two different ways. Um, she gets things done last minute, whereas I planned. And then I get things like I plan and then I do like 1A, cook, check. She goes like one, she goes from one to seven to six to four to three, but then still gets it done. I can't work like that. And I, I know it's hard to work with your sibling in anything, but there's no other, there's nothing better than having a sibling. Cause like no one knows what you, what you go through in life. No one understands your story, your, your, your upbringing, the way you are than your sibling. And when something happens, like who are you going to go to? Like my husband knows my family so well, but the stories that sometimes I tell him, he's like, what? And no one knows, but your sibling and the same thing for him, vice versa. So I just want to know what it's like to work together. They are such a beautiful brother and sister, I may add. And I don't know if you guys follow Eric. I'll definitely make sure he gives you his handler. His body is amazing. So he eats a lot, but I don't know where it goes. And we would definitely find out. And they're waiting to join in the chat. So I want you all to give a warm welcome to the sibling soiree. Let's get these good looking brother and sister in here. You know, it'd be amazing if I can work this mouse pad because someone who um, owns this computer refuses to get a mouse pad and it's very difficult to click in and out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I had it upside down. All right. Hello, hello, doctor. Hi, guys. Hello, Welcome hello, to the hello. show. How's it going? So exciting. How are you? Good. I'm so excited to meet you. And I'm so happy to see you. Eric's been so long. Eric and I went to high school together. Seriously, forever. So long. Good to see you. Yes. I don't know if you guys were listening, but at first I said you guys are like the best looking brother and sister. So I won't say who's better looking, <laughs> but I will say maybe like she's a doctor, but I won't say. Oh. <laughs> you know, our sisters got to stick together. Listen, I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> yes. So for everyone who may not know you guys, can you please tell us about the sibling soiree? Sure. Well, the Sibling Soiree is a space where we sample and support Black-owned food and beverage companies. That's kind of our intro tagline. Um, and we really believe in providing an opportunity to just highlight the amazing brands that are out there. And listen, oh. these are not new companies, right? The reality oh. is that these are businesses that have been in existence for years. And maybe now because the world is suddenly woke, um, that we're, we're suddenly recognizing and appreciating um, these brands. And so this just gives us a chance to pay homage to those groups and um, get a little tasting and sampling in at the moment too. Right. And, and let's be real, like we're foodies through and through, right? That's what we do. It's always been our MO. Um, so, you know, when we, and I guess we'll get more into this, but when we came up with this plan, it was literally just like, this is what we love to do. We want to share this with the world. Uh, we want to put it out there and, and highlight some of these businesses while we do it, you know? Um, and that's kind of what we are. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So um, how did you guys even come up with this concept? And who came up with it? <laughs> so, so this is an interesting story, actually. Um, I don't know if there's a who per se. It was kind of an evolving conversation. Um, so I'm, I'm hanging at home one night and my sis hits me up. And like I said, we're always talking foodies, sharing recipes, things like that. That's kind of just our thing. Um, so she texts me with this list of black owned wineries. You know, this was kind of at the time when Black Lives Matter was blowing up. Yes. Everybody wanted to support black owned businesses. And she found this list of black owned wineries. And I was like, wow, that's so dope. I was like, we should just try everything on this list. <laughs> and like, yeah. you know, just talking as a foodie to my sister. Right. And then, you know, we kept texting back and forth and, and every text was an evolution in the, the mindset and the process. Um, and then it was like, oh, well, we should review them. Oh, maybe we should put this on YouTube because other people might want to see it. And like, next thing we know, we had a whole concept for a show and we ran Love with it. it. <laughs> 
But... It, morphed, it morphed very quickly, too. Very, and very I think, quickly. you know, I'm, we're not talking about over a span of days. It was literally like saw the list, started just following back and forth. Yeah. And like just... a 15, 20 minute text yeah. uh, exchange. <laughs> yeah. much. Crazy. That's so cool. Yeah. And one thing that you guys did mention is about um, when this all started doing the Black Lives Matter movement. And mm -hmm. one thing about your page that I love is that you guys are true to, like you said, Black owned businesses and to drinks and all how important was the black lives movement and have making sure you have black um business owned companies for for a sibling soiree yeah oh well, i think you know similar to what eric said you know just again there was someone took the time right it was travel noir i can shout them out and they took the time out to identify all of the black owned wines that were out there and you know i think that again at it being at the highlight and the, and the height really of um, you know, folks were protesting in the streets. Everybody was trying to find a way to be involved and contribute to the movement, right? I think, you know, everybody is not a protester. That's kind of one of the things I tell my right. students. You know, that might not be your way to support, but maybe you're making it uh, intentional when you're purchasing things to support Black-owned, yeah. small business, woman-owned businesses. Um, and so I think that, yeah, it was really important to us. And honestly, it started with wine and there's a long list out there. So we knew we wouldn't be short content but we said, you know what, let's not just limit it to wine. There are restaurants, there are producers of different seasoning brands, right. and, you know, all kinds of things that are out there that many times are on the shelves and we don't know have been, you know, off the blood, sweat and tears of black people. So um, it was very important to us. That's really important. And I just want to piggyback over that for a second and, and, and highlight this one part, because you were saying that not everyone's meant to be like on the front line of a protest. Yeah. So this was something that I struggled a lot with during that time. I tried so many different things uh, to contribute to the cause and that were meaningful to me. And they all felt very fleeting. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to donate to this. Now what? I'm going to go march. Now what? Now you know what? what I mean? And it became like this. I, I, I felt like I needed something to contribute that was true to me, something that yeah. had longevity that I could keep on going with. And then when this presented itself, that spoke to me, right? Because this is something that I love and that I'm passionate about. Um, and it's also a way to help uplift the community. So that to me was a really important connection, which, yeah. um, you know. And then you get to eat and drink with your sister. Do what you love, support the community. Yes. I mean, it's a win-win. The best job ever. ever. Yes. Yeah. You're like, well, let's do something for the black community. Do you want to eat and um, drink? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another thing about you guys, like the thing that I love going on your page is like forward. There's no what are they, who are they? I mean, from your theme song, which I'm not going to lie, whoever did it should kind of put that on Apple Music. Oh, come on. Shout out to Call Me Quay. We're That's going to put cousin. a proper Ooh. shout out out there. Super He's dope. Yes. Cousin. He's a dope musician. Uh, Call Me Quay on Instagram and, and platforms. Um, Quay, he's an artist. He just released his first album and it's super dope. He's a crazy lyricist. Um, we gave him our concept and he wrote it out like that. So yeah, culture is very important to us and, and family as well. Right, as yes. you see in the show. So yes. that was, that was a big Tell part. me a little bit about your history, where you guys are from. I see your your shirts. Um, are you ready for coming to America next week? Like <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we have already well, gone Ghana, baby. America. Yes, <laughs> you are the true story. <laughs> right. Well, look, you know, I think you know we really take pride in the fact that we are the children of two Ghanaian immigrants. You know, Ghanaian immigrants growing up on Long Island, where this was before it was cool to be an African, right? Yes. So, oh, right now it's cool to be all oh, kinds oh, of yes, cool. Yeah, it's cool. Which I it's love cool. to see. But you know, yes. yeah. It was it was not always that cool. And so, you know, despite those struggles, oftentimes being in institutions and spaces where we were the only ones, right, who looked like us, um, our parents did a really good job at instilling our culture within us, at least, you know, and, and Eric and I had somewhat, you know, different experiences and he'll talk about his time in Ghana. But um, I think just having parents who said, no, I don't care if your friends are doing this thing. You are yes. a young kid. This is yeah. what you're doing. Oh, and good. those things matter. It matters and you grow with it. Right. Um, I also had, you know, part of my background and my work is around international education. So I've been really committed to exposing others to culture um, and then also having an HP you experience. I spent time at Howard University. And so okay. HU, okay. <laughs> um, you know, all of those things have kind of in some ways allowed me to not only come into my own, but being passionate about sharing that with others. Yeah. 
And I won't say too much more. You're going to have like more, such but... a girl crush right now. Uh, <laughs> Eric, we can go. You she can tends to have that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, see you later. It was uh, great I having you. Was Hi, Eric, you can I go. appreciate it. <laughs> Eric, story, tell us about story you. Story of my life. Story of my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, just to add a little more. Um, yeah, we did kind of have different experiences. I mean, kind of the same growing up in Long Island here, but um I also, I moved to Ghana when I was a teenager, like kind of formative years, like pre-teenager, 12 to 14, 15, around there. Um, and that completely 100% shaped who I am today, right? Like mm-hmm. just the the culture and, and everything in Ghana is is very different from the, menta- the mentality, I should say, is different from here in the US, right? When we talk about uh, like, it takes a village to raise a child, that kind of mentality, you know, like it was very much that. Um, So it teaches you a a new level of respect for your elders, for your culture, for tradition, for, you know, all of these things that I had at home, but like being in it was also very different, I think, you know. Yeah, I can Um, relate from being Haitian. I I was going to say that I think you have kind of a similar culture, like mentality, yeah. Yeah, they don't play around. No. <laughs> no. They don't care what your friend, your little friend is doing. Nope. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I just love, like I said before, I love how you guys are so close and my sister and I are close as well. Um, but I know siblings argue. <laughs> oh yeah. What would you say is like your biggest argument when you guys are deciding what wine <laughs> to oh, 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 or what wine to try or what food to try or even post like I don't know who takes the photos, but I know someone gets on a ladder because they just look so nice. <laughs> Even that, you have to argue like, no, I don't like that photo. Trust me, I got this. You guys cannot be this perfect. It's a labor of love. We're but, definitely not you know, perfect. <laughs> it, but, but, but before going into some of our dramas and our beefs, true story, we really are friends. And I, and I don't take that for granted because I know a lot of siblings who don't get along, right? Yes. Um, we actually like each other. And so- um, We are the best of friends. We can honestly say that. We always have been growing up. We are still very, very close. But like you said, siblings fight. That's normal, right? And yeah. I think almost because you're so close- there's a yes. level of it that you know you can fight and bounce back with no problem. So like right. we have and a it's problem also that voicing ability, like you ain't going nowhere. Like, like I'm yeah. gonna say how I feel right now, and yeah. you know what's gonna happen is gonna happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> and 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 I think you know well one I'm I'm appreciative of this appreciative of this process because you know, we now live different lives. And so in some ways, even though we're close, this gives us a chance to really get to know each other on a different level. It's one thing to like know your sibling, but now to work with each other, right? So like Eric is a perfectionist, you know, when it comes to his craft. And so we'll be shooting stuff and I'll think it's great and I'm ready to go home. And he's like, like, no, "No, that's not it. We gotta do it again. <laughs> Why? It looks great. And that's probably you're the just biggest source of tension. Later on, and make it look great anyway. So yeah. why do we right. have to do this again? Um, and so I think that's our biggest source of tension. <laughs> sometimes it's about On that. Set, me wanting to when, go again. When I'm tired, I might be a little snap back, you know, and and um, a lot snap back. <laughs> well, oh well, hold on. Also, also, hold on now. Listen, <laughs> you ain't gonna get on my girl. I'm just saying, okay. Also, we have to keep in mind, she is a natural born personality. Like she was made for TV and this kind of stuff, right? Whereas I am, I'm a behind the scenes guy, right? right? I, I'm a photographer. I like to be the one putting the vision together. I'm not always the guy in front of the camera, right? Yeah. So for me, I'm like, okay, I need to feel right about me. I need to feel right about this segment, everything. And she's just like, I'm a natural, I'm great. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I need to do it again. So she gets upset, you know? <laughs> it's a thing it's a thing (laughs) but I also like things to be done well so you know and I think that we have that and that's where you guys meet in the middle right it's where we meet in the middle but like you're well and then like like, you may be like it's good and he's like no we could be better right yeah and and and, you know she might roll her eyes but then she's like okay let's do it again and we're good, you know? And then I'm like, that was it. And she's like, great. <laughs> so, you but know. But the beauty about it is at the end when we do watch it and we watch our show, <laughs> yeah. we watch it. We're like, yeah. damn, that was good. Yeah. You know, so it yeah. makes it worth it. Yeah. I just want to take a second because as you talk about like the drama that unfolds on set, I want to shout out our videographer, Carl. <laughs> because he sees all of the behind the scenes drama well can i say you wouldn't even have him if it wasn't for it, i mean this is this is how this happened right okay. like it was, I was like connected. carl 
Say he Mary, said, need you. Me. And he was like, I, I don't know. And I'm like, no, you're I'm not, I'm not really asking you. I'm just I'm <laughs> gonna do this for them. That's so dope. And I'm glad you did, because you know what? It was a relationship that worked out perfectly. Perfect. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, like even what was it out, last out. night? I'm like, hey, let's watch a show. Was it the night before? And he's like, I gotta edit for the sibling soiree. And I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, what listen, you ain't no, gonna honestly, do. Uh, <laughs> while we shout out your husband, it's important to shout you out because you know when you are in a partnership um and you know that someone is passionate about their craft mm -hmm. you also have to give credit to the partner who is supportive of that and it's very Absolutely. clear he's always talking about you um and we value that because again this is a family show and so um, yes, girl, whenever he wins you. his oscar golden globe whatever and he gets on stage uh like Marie and Malcolm, if he better don't thank me, there's gonna be a problem. Just hey, like you about, you about to be standing right there next to him. So right there. It's like, ma'am, we are calling Aunt, yes. Point and shoot. Right. Well, I am him, he is me. What? That's right. Yep. Um, one thing is um also is that you guys introduced me to black girl rose. I usually only drink rose that's from Paris because we mm -hmm. went there, and to me, that's like the best rosé in the world. Mm. But um, that's, you guys are influencers. Do you have people come up to you and say that as well? Like, oh, because of you, I tried this or? Well, yeah, actually, yeah. I guess. You know, it's funny because like that word influencer, and I guess, you know, maybe it's a generational thing. As I look, I'm very social media focused because of my work. Um, you know, and I, I think of influencers as like, oh, you have a million followers and you're, you're you know, uh, collaborating with brands and all this stuff. and. So I don't necessarily mentally put myself in that category, but when you say it like that, yeah, I guess we are influencers, right? You know. Well, you are influencers exactly. because you did the TikTok feta cheese. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. We did do the TikTok. Yeah, feta we are. We are riding some of those trends, and we're definitely putting brands out there. So yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely a level of influence, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I but think I think it but I think it was also natural anyway because I think within our friend circles we were already kind of the person that they would say, "Hey, we're, you know, we want to drink something. What should we drink?" Right. Um and so it was already kind of happening informally, so it was kind of natural for us to, you know, we don't call ourselves psoms right we're not sommeliers no. we, no. we yeah. at some point we'll do the trainings you You're know interested. But, it's, yeah. it's, but that's, that's it's what we title. like right and right. being honest about it nobody wants to know what kind of notes they are you know they just want to know does it taste good and so right. that's what we try to do make it relative and relevant you know understand well that's funny you say that because i definitely was gonna ask you what um what is your favorite wine the both of you mm. mine is rosé we know. Yeah. I, actually, I, did, I feel like I need to send you a bottle of rosé. It's been a while. We know that yeah, you're a I like fan. pink, and pink is my favorite color. That's, it looks good on you, girl. And it, and it tastes <laughs> delicious. It does. It just good love, I don't know what it is. I used to be, like, obsessed with um, white wine. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think it's, like, when we went to Paris, it became full-blown rosé. Yeah. Um, and everyone tells me, try red. And I, we went to, like, a restaurant. I tried seven different reds, and I just couldn't do it. It wasn't it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah rose or champagne yeah and what about you guys i it, yeah, I, I think a lot of people's palettes fall, fall kind of like in the same in the same realm and we also on the show we talk about how a lot of people start sweeter and then progress to getting like a little bit drier as yeah you know, your palate changes over time as you try different wines so true um, i like dry rose mm -hmm. yeah, and so i used to like too. sweet yeah, exactly. So I'm the same way. And now, I mean, it's almost gotten to the point where I'm just exclusively dry. So a lot of times on the show, I'm like, mm, that's too sweet. That's too sweet. That's too sweet. Yeah. Um, I think my go to, <laughs> yeah, I think my go to's now are for white, probably a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. And uh, for red, I love a Pinot Touch. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a story behind that because so. Literally, my whole family, all my friends have been to South Africa. You all know if you follow me that I travel often. South yes. Africa is at the top of my list, and I haven't been there yet. Um, so this is the grape that's very specific to the region, and my sister actually introduced me to it, and I fell in love with it, and it's not in every liquor store. So I am always on a hunt for a good Pinotage, and that is kind of my go-to red uh, Pinotage and pizza. I suggest great pairing. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I And yeah. you, my dear? Um, it depends on my mood, right? Similarly, I think that I go through phases. Um, I love a good oaky, buttery Chardonnay. Um, you know, I just, 
for whatever reason, I feel like it's nice and full bodied and it just really tastes delicious. Um, so I definitely like a good shard. Um, with reds, I'll probably do a red blend or a cab, right? It kind of, again, depends. Of course, Pinotage, you know, just because it, so Pinotage has like a very coffee taste flavor to it. So it's very unique. Sometimes it can be really heavy. Um, but if I'm going to drink a red, it'll probably be a red blend. But I do like bubbles every now and then, you know, yes. and so whether it's some Prosecco, there's something sexy about it, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah. okay, I'm you feel grown. Yeah, you feel grown and you don't need a celebration to pop a bottle either, you know, so um, I, I definitely like a, a champagne or a Prosecco every now and then. So I usually do something called the lightning round with all of my guests. So with you guys, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, no thinking at all. But instead of ask, um, answering for yourself, you're going to answer for your brother and you will answer for your sister. Interesting. Are we okay. ready? So I'm going to ask the question and ladies first, always on my show. Um, and you will go first. Tell us what Eric's favorite color is and then you'll go and tell us what um Lucinda's favorite color is and there's no thinking so the first you know first thought that comes to your head okay, okay. favorite color blue <laughs> all Her day favorite color red okay what meal can you eat every day oh um Popeye's chicken <laughs> damn I feel some kind of way about that she's not wrong though <laughs> And what about uh, her? Maybe her husband's oxtail. Oh, I love a good oxtail. Mm. Oh, we yeah. <laughs> um, How many countries have you been to? Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you can answer that for each other. <laughs> we both um, travel so much. Can I say ranges? So I'll definitely Yeah, say... estimate. Okay. One, two, three. Ten. Okay. Go, Eric. One, two, three. Wait, did you go? Yeah, she said, said ten. ten. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna go thirteen. I don't um, know. Favorite, I think we're both wrong. <laughs> favorite alcoholic drink? Mm. Whiskey. Yeah. Uh, champagne. Okay. Um, who takes home leftovers when you go to a restaurant? Both of us. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't leaving no food on the table. <laughs> we negotiate. <laughs> we do, we do. We split it up strategically so we both get something to take home. Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> we might even order another side or two. <laughs> that's to make it a whole meal. Yeah. Right. That's so funny. That is that's, that's a smart idea. I'm gonna tell my sister. She's the queen of taking home leftovers. I'm gonna tell her that one. It's not um, like eating good food the next day. <laughs> first, first job. Um, working at, um, at, oh, was it the Time Life building? Yeah. Working at Time Life as, Ooh, an intern, as an intern for Sports Illustrated. Oh, double points, double points. Okay, do we go back and, and correct the, uh, the wrong answers? <laughs> yes, or, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, Ooh. Intern at People Magazine? All right, who go ahead and tell us what was your first job, Eric? Uh, it was in the Time Life building, it was not at Sports Illustrated, it was an IT internship, uh, yeah. for a book publishing company. Oh, it was boring. Oh, it was like boring. <laughs> no, but didn't you, didn't you intern first before the company? Didn't you? anyway, we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> and, and Lucinda, yours? Um, it was a summer job at Chase Bank. All right, all right. What were your what was your country number? I don't know. I've never she said yours which... was yours was That's ten and you said hers was thirteen. I went low because she went low. Mine's in the twenties. Oh okay. Really? okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> see, even I don't know, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's been around more. My, mine's in the twenties. Yeah, and before I you join, I told everyone to please make sure you give your handler because your stomach is like a washboard. It is amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. I even had to say to him, drill. <laughs> and he was like, I'm gonna tell Carl, I was like, listen, mind your business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could look, I could compliment. Well, thank you. I um, worked in my quarantine had a different plan for me. Oh, but yes. I'm, we I'm both back to, we all. Back to it. Uh, now <laughs> you went from ash, um, washboard to just a board. It's all right. <laughs> 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 
have either of you ever been in a physical fight? Am I still answering for him? Yes. Oh, no. no. That's good. Um, last question. What chores did you, uh, did you do as a child? Uh, again, for him? Yes. Um, this is literally, dusting, literally dusting every Saturday. Job. Yes, dusting I was going to say, every Saturday. Saturday. I'm just going to tell you this. Her thing was the bathroom in the kitchen, and I dusted and vacuumed yeah. every Saturday morning. <laughs> Dad would wake us up to loud either high life music, Ghanaian high life music, or jazz, and right. it was time to clean, yes. and we had our jobs. That was every weekend. Yes, that's <laughs> like a Haitian household. I'm yep. trying to tell you. There's a book, and I need to find this book. Because mm-hmm. every black parent, it doesn't matter where you, what national, every <laughs> black from this book? has this book. And it's like Saturday morning, blast the music up, yep. make them do their chores. Yep. They don't do their chores, you read them for filth. Yeah. It's just a rule. <laughs> Who wrote that book? We need to find I, that person. The thing is, I don't think we need you find edition. the book until you're like in your 50s. And then they're uh, like, they, they pass it down. After. Yeah. You can't yours. even be like in your 30s yet. It hasn't right, been right, passed right. It's too early. when you're a, a <laughs> certain age. All right, and this is my final, final question, but this is for yourself. Mm-hmm. If you can have a, uh, a sibling soiree date with any other sister, brother, 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 sister, sister, who would it be? Eric? Can it be a couple? Yes. How about you and Carl? <laughs> Oh, oh, I was laughing. Oh, butter me up. Oh, I think we're long overdue for a soiree <laughs> date. And my girl. Look, I love me so well. I love Barack and Michelle Obama. So Ooh, it would definitely that's a good Eric, one. Eric's like, oh man. <laughs> it would definitely yeah, be that. Eric's like, uh, I'm over here I, kissing I up to the show. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good That's one. That's a very good one. I yeah. probably would choose um, Rihanna. And Ooh, I think she would too. be great with wine. And for some reason, she always gets to leave whatever restaurant she is with wine. <laughs> so I know she's drinking in the yeah. car. She's like, right. If you go yeah. and look, she has so many photos leaving. Yeah. With she's a bottle. Fun. She's fun yeah. to hang with. I can so attest I'm to like, that. That would be a good time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you both so much for taking your time to be on my little B show. Please, please, slowly tell them your your handler so they can follow you, please. Absolutely. (laughs) So we are at The Sibling Soiree on all the platforms. Um, Also, I am at Eric Akwe, and she is at Dr. Underscore, or DR Underscore, Lou Underscore. Doctor, okay? Doctor. (laughs) Okay, Black female doctor. Yeah. Thank you we guys try. so we much try. for being on my show. Eric, I will have my people call your people since you know I had a crush on her, but now she doesn't even want to go out with me. So uh, Eric, call me. Yes, I won. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you guys have a, um enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. Listen, thanks for having me. Keep yourself. doing what you're doing and continue to lift as you climb, sis. We uh, uh thank you so much. Same to you guys. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. That was so fun. I love them. Do you see their smile? Like, you could tell. They're just happy, genuine people. And next coming in, we have Mike Miller to do a little sports talk with us. Everyone, please. He he does this a lot. I call it the cha-cha slide. So when he comes in, I'll be like this. You ready? Hello, Mr. Miller. Yeah, now I'm feeling good. I'm really in. in oh, t- how are you today? Hey, Deb, how you doing? Now, I'm doing see, great. Is, it's so good to see you. Good to see you too. See, this is the real interview right here. This is the <laughs> real conversation. Carl was just playing, you know, media man. Deb, you are the one. So, oh, thank you so much. First of all, I really, really want to thank you for being here. For everyone who may not know, your hometown, which you left New York, um, for Texas. Yes. And first, I just want to thank you so much for giving me any time to be on the show, everything that's happened with Texas. And, you know, talking to Carl, he told me what you were going through. And if you don't mm-hmm. mind, if you can just share, I just. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Deb. Oh, brother, no it. problem. I appreciate it. Um, 
So yeah, so it was interesting. So what was it last Sunday, not last Sunday, Sunday before that, basically when everything started to happen, the second week of February, it started off with just cold weather. Right. And so with the cold weather, we had started to see, you know, maybe the temperature dropping, uh, ice on the roads because it was rain with the cold weather. Uh, we were just being mindful of it. But that Sunday, I believe that was the 12th or the 13th, that that Sunday, we um, there was ice on the roads. Right, because I remember there was like the pile up we heard on the news. So that's when it started. Yeah, so that was, I think, that that Thursday in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'm in San Antonio. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of like everybody was monitoring it. Like, okay, something's happening. Yeah. So, but they already had projected that the state would get this winter solstice. So from Sunday night, it really started to get really cold. And then Monday, of course, it hit a low of 10 degrees. And so, of course, we're from New York. So we're, we've seen that before, but here... The, the real issue they're not, was they're not used to it right yeah so that, that was the biggest thing the biggest thing for for this uh winter solstice was it was too cold for too long yeah. they're not used to being this cold and especially not this long i think it was hasn't had this this type of cold weather in a hundred years so uh we personally had our lights were all, our electricity was off from sunday night till thursday the following week so that's the long so that was about four or five and days you have children yes i have a beautiful wife and three children small yeah. children under six six uh my daughter will be five tomorrow and one and a half so the uh, as you can imagine the kids are like uh, they're cold but they're playing around but they're cold my wife is cold so it was just like it, it was really tough and of course we could the, the we were snacking and everything because you really couldn't eat anything because all your food was spoiling. Because you're right. I saw like, videos of people putting their food in the fr in the snow, like to keep it yeah. cold. But then I'm like, but where are you going to cook it? Yeah, that was that was the thing about it. And they were actually they were making reports telling uh, people not to put their food outside and not to put uh, stuff outside. So they were actually uh, knowing that people were doing that and was trying to go away from it. So we kept had to kind of like find ways to, the uh, Monday night, our neighbor was cooking on the grill. He's from Alaska. So he- It's um, funny, that's, I was going to ask that. I was like, wasn't anyone grilling? Because I think yeah. the first day or two, you would be like, I, let me just grill in like, you know, shorts and a, and a jacket and laugh this off. Thinking it's going to be right. a moment, but now you're like, all right, we're on day four. It's not yeah. funny anymore. So, yeah, no, that's, and that's, Deb, you, you, crystallize exactly what we felt once we hit day four it was like okay all right this is serious now let's stop laughing because kind of, you kind of wanted to wait it out to see okay maybe th this will last you know a day or two and then you could get back to normal but when we started to see especially uh tuesday for us we just had it was it was intermittent sunday and monday but tuesday was completely off no electricity so once wednesday hit, it was like all right let's let's try to find a plan b and fortunately enough uh one of uh, uh, a good friend of ours lives not too far from us and they were able, they still had electricity. So we oh, were good. able to go to their house and, you know, get warm and, and brush sleep in a warm bed. And, and and brush your teeth, yeah. wash your body. So, yeah, so it was good to, 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 to have that relief, you know, and some people weren't fortunate enough to do that. I think it was uh, estimated it's been over uh, 90 deaths in wow. the state at co uh, contributing to this whole winter solstice. So it, it, it's an unfortunate situation, but by the grace of God, we were able to be sustained. So, you know, yeah. I'm thankful for that. I won't touch too much on it because, you know, this is not a politics show, but you're, you, uh, is, you know. You know me, I'm a, po okay. I'm a politics person. So I go know, there. but you know, this is a, this will be fun and bubbly, but I will say, you know, <laughs> thank God that our president came to see what he can do and, and, and oh. aid because, the senator was going to DR. He he basically was like, "F F this, I'm out." He's going to Cancun, man. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to get some sun rays. That's right. Until man. he got caught, the the power of social media. That's right. You you cannot hide. Social media will expose you. You cannot hide. Yeah, people were like, "Wait a minute!" Like you look <laughs> what familiar. What are you doing here? <laughs> Where are you from? Okay. Yeah, and then he was like, "I guess I gotta go back home." I was trying to celebrate my daughter's birthday. Mm, okay. Stop. He blamed them. 
He yeah. said it because he, he wanted like, to go. If I'm going to throw somebody, just throw the little kid. She won't. Oh, <laughs> she little, don't little, know. Little, like, 10 year olds but, don't care. <laughs> right? Um, but like I said, I'm so grateful that you could be here. God bless you and your family and everyone in Texas. These times are, I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping 2021 is not like last year, but I don't know, man. So far, things are crazy already. That's right. It's already crazy. So yeah. who knows? But back. like I said, thank you so much. And now it's time for some sports talk. Yay. Uh, <laughs> and if you don't know, I know nothing but everything about sports. So <laughs> this is going to be a great time. <laughs> and I had a question about football and I was told, don't even ask because you don't do football. No, I don't. So I appreciate you not even asking. Well, this is my show, so I ask whatever the F I want to well, ask. Ask if you want to. Uh, all right, and it. then I'll ask, <laughs> and then you'll, oh, you'll just skip it. But we won't get there unless we need okay. you. Okay. Okay. Now, I actually was going to ask you a, a question, but nothing gets me more excited than just getting Carl Kalanj upset. I don't Why? know. It, it, Why it do you get him me. upset? So while I was getting ready today, and I was going to ask you a question about Kyrie Irving, um, mm -hmm. and I'll still ask that question, but they said the Celtics are saying the reason why they're not performing as well as they are is because they're still, you know, missing Kyrie Irving. And Carl believes that that is true. But I think get over it. You lost him. Now it's time to move on. Am I wrong? Wait, wait. They're saying they're missing Kyrie Irving. Yes, was he not on the Celtics? See, I know nothing but everything. But why are they? But why would they be? Kyrie wasn't making them good. He was making them bad. Well, he according not, to Carl Kulans, that is the reason why they're not doing as well as they they should be. So please educate me, because I I listen to what my husband says. But from what I see, the Celtics have not been good since Paul Pierce. But I may not man. know much. Tell me, you, yeah, you the know, last time you know, that I know the Celtics were popping was Paul Pierce and the yeah, hello, three. Tell him, Deb. Tell him, Deb. Deb, you know he's emotional and he's not thinking I straight. know, but when I try to have the conversation and, you know, I know nothing about everything, but what I do recall, the Celtics really haven't been, I mean, when was the last time they even made it to the playoffs? No, they made it to the playoffs. They, they make it to the playoffs every year. Here's oh, I'm problem. sorry. Oh, sorry. Championship. When was oh, the last well, time you. they got there? 2009? Oh. Yeah, 2009. So oh. we talk about over 10 years. Oh. But um, so, um, Deb, here's the real problem. And Carl really knows this. The real problem with the Celtics is they should have fired Danny Ainge, their GM. They should have fired him like two or three years ago. They haven't. And the problem is Danny Ainge has been doing the obvious, picking the obvious people in the draft, like picking Jason Tatum second. Anybody would have picked him there. So he's been doing obvious things that have been for, for the last couple of years covering up the fact that he's a bad GM. He doesn't I mean, know how to build. He didn't he just pick what's his name? Tristan Tom. That was a horrible. I that was a horrible signing. Horrible. I don't I mean, even know anything, and I could have told you that's bad. You should have just horrible. let him play on the Kardashians team yeah. and just let it go. <laughs> even I know that. He is tall for no reason. When he plays, no he reason. does nothing. Now listen, he is. Tristan Thompson is still in this league because of LeBron James' ability Amen. to get There's that contract. Amen. There's a clause contract. somewhere so, that says, let my homie yeah. go and let him do whatever he wants. Yes. yes. Keep, keep him in the NBA as long yes. as I say I, so. LeBron's like, I ain't going to play with him, though. Yeah, but right. Yes, I try. That's right. right. LeBron's like, I ain't playing with him. But, but, but y'all got to yeah. make sure him you keep him. Yes. That's right. That's Even right. Even though so. he, he's like, I told him, like, his two left feet. The other day I watched him and I'm like, <laughs> how is he on the floor? And he's taller than ev like almost everyone on the team. Everyone he's blocking. I just don't understand. Some people are just getting, like I said, some people, they uh, size now is a premium in the NBA. Not a lot, Everybody's doing small ball. So not a lot of people have that much size. So because he's tall, I guess you want to keep him. And he historically is a decent rebounder. So I guess you want to keep him, but he's really not that good. So it's, but it really is the problem with the Celtics because they got blown out last night by the Hawks. The problem with the Celtics is starts on the top. Their general manager should have been fired, and he's not fired yet, and no one knows why. But you had different general managers that have, he's living off of one championship 
13 years ago, 12, yeah, 13 years ago, and they should have got rid of him. And so I don't know if, if the if the owner owes him money or something. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but they got to get rid of him because it, and all I'm going to say, I'm going to just sneak this in here, Deb, because I got to, because I was thinking about it last night. Had he been a black GM, failing like this, because I there's a perfect example, Joe Dumars, uh, he was the GM for the Pistons, and you know he won a championship with Isaiah Thomas and them. He was the GM. They won a championship under his uh, stewardship, but then over the years, they were getting progressively, progressively worse, and they yeah. got rid of Joe Dumars. Even though they yeah. was emotionally connected because he played for the Pistons, they got rid of him. Danny Ainge, he'd been sticking around way too long, and this team is getting worse and worse and worse. Time for him to go. And then you can, and then we, then you're gonna have to look at Brad Stevens too, their coach as well, because I don't think he's as great as everybody thinks he is. So, yeah, they got some problems. <laughs> um, now back to Kyrie Irving. Um, also was told that he would like to change the NBA logo to mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant. Um, and he has the approval of Vanessa Bryant. And I know I'm gonna say something, and I know everyone's gonna attack me, and I get it, and I don't care and rest in peace to Kobe Bryant, but why, why, why does he have to be the logo? Like, we didn't think about this before he passed away. I'm just saying, why? So, so this is, well, so the backstory is, Ky that was Kyrie's favorite player. Kobe was like a mentor to him. So Kobe means a lot to Kyrie Irving. So I understand it from that point. Standpoint. I get it. So then change your number to his number and your last name to Brian. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And 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 Kobe meant a lot to all of to a lot of the most of the current players. But if you are going to change the NBA logo, which they will not, uh, they'll most likely everybody believes they should have changed it to Michael Jordan. It should have been a jump. Yeah. That's uh, who so, it should be. Yeah. So Michael, because Michael Jordan, there is no Kobe Bryant without Michael Jordan. And so Michael Jordan, because you, when you got to think about it, the the Magic, uh, excuse me, Magic Johnson, Larry Scottie Bird. Pippen they may say, sorry, Scotty Pippen may say there's no Jordan without him. I'm just saying. Everyone's no, going to say, well, that is true. Person, everybody, you wouldn't be here. That's you wouldn't, true. Everybody, then LeBron's going to be like, oh, can I get my name added on this? Yeah, then right. when Dwayne Wade's son gets into the NBA, can I get my dad name added on this? That, I'm just I, saying. I it's a lot of like the they they actually the NBA has in the past a uh, few years ago I, I believe they were it wasn't that big of a groundswell for it but they had talked about changing the logo Michael Jordan being right. on it I remember the, that, the NBA yeah. because of the branding it, it's not like the Washington football team where it's a racist yeah. racial slur this is just it, Jerry West is the silhouette there's a big backstory behind it. Uh, but so basically, the NBA is never going to change their logo. It's not something that's pressing for them. Would it be nice if they changed it? I'm not going to complain if it's Kobe. I love Kobe, too. So I wouldn't complain about it. But I just think there's so many, people are going to argue for Jordan. They're going to say, why would you skip Jordan and make it Kobe? It'll be more uh, more issues than I, I think they they need to focus on right now. There's other things that we Agreed. that the NBA players can be worried about. I think they're, I mean, they're they can open like a museum, right? Yeah. Like the Kobe Bryant Museum or like a foundation right. or something. Right, right. You know? I think that's Worry more about that, Cur Curry, instead of going to all your um, strip clubs. All right. Another thing is the Utah Jazz is taking over. They're, and I, they're even dominating the Lakers. Yes. And that's amazing because I don't like the Lakers. <laughs> um, never did, never will. And if you watch the first show, I said why. It's because they, uh, you know, they played against the Kings and they won. And um, Sacramento Kings in 99. So for, to this day, I will never root for the Lakers. Deb, I don't we, are, Deb we are more alike than, than I ever knew. That is one, that was one of my reasons why I don't like the Lakers. No. Because I was a big fan of the Kings, particularly oh, Mike Gibby. So... I was a Mike Bibby fan, so oh, yeah, yes. that, wow, yeah, we're the same in that. Yes, yeah, that is so the, I don't the care. And I like LeBron. I just don't like Lakers. Oh, well, then I, that's I, where we defer. I know. You know I I agree. Agree. Well, the only reason why I like LeBron is because what he did for Miami, you know? That's he right. Really, you are. He put us on, yeah, he put us on the map, and that was huge for Dwayne Wade and Dinosaur. So that was a big... <laughs> 
a dinosaur, I mean Bosch. We all know. And, <laughs> and um, that was amazing for that time. And I mean, when he left, though, I was furious because you took our time to do this whole publicity. Like, I'm taking That's my right. talents to my <laughs> That's right. And then you left. So, but yeah. I still got love for him for what he did. I just don't like the Lakers. So, but yeah, um, do you feel like Utah Jazz is about to take this over? Yeah, yes. And I'm yeah. going to tell you what. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, see, when we talked about it before on the sports hit list, I think it was last week, Carl tried to, your husband in his media savvy ways, tried to push me to make a prediction that I did not have to make. And He's I told a bully. Him no. He's Do a bully. Let, he don't is. let, you He's know, this is what happens. When you were younger, yeah. when he was younger, you know, those people like, they didn't get a say. No one really paid them attention. Yeah, now oh, he okay. has a platform. Now I know. His show. And he okay. just wants to, you know. He takes advantage. Okay. Yes. I know that. Now. Don't Thank let you him, for giving me that. Don't yeah. let him try to tell you. I, you hear that call? I'm standing up for myself. Your wife is, is backing me now. I'm standing and you, up for And myself. you do just like that with your fingers, too. Just like, you. like, yo, stop trying to bully me, Carl. So he tried to make me pick Utah last week. I didn't want to pick Utah last week. But this week, I, I there was an eight-game stretch that I, that I wanted to look at. Certain teams they were going to play. They played all playoff teams. They blew out the Bucks. They beat Philly. They beat the Clippers. They just smoked the Lakers last night. They beat the Heat twice. They're they're ten and one in February. They have every ingredient to win a championship. Every ingredient right now. They got, there's a bunch of numbers that I could throw out there, but they they have all the things that you need to be a championship team. So, especially given what's wrong with Anthony Davis. Yeah, I think they got a good chance to come out of the West. Deb, did you fall asleep? Oh. <laughs> I was oh, like, what dear. happened to you? Oh, I'm I thought something to you. Asleep. It's called respect. Keep going. Oh, yes. So, I mean, um, I know what you're used to on the sports hit list. Everyone just talks over everyone and he's yeah, screaming. Right. No, funny. on my show, we're educated. We let people speak. Oh, what you trying to say? We all dumb on the sports hit list? No, you just <laughs> say dumb things sometimes. But, you know, okay. that's how it is on the B <laughs> show. This that's is, right. you know, this, you, that's man. like high school and this is private, like, you know, like public oh, that, school and oh, this is private college. school. Oh, it's you know, private school. College is like that's too bougie. School. We still. <laughs> oh, oh, that's public school versus this private school. Yes. That was public. Yes. Fortunately, it's public school. Oh, I yes. Think. I that's all. I'm, I'm a public school kid, so I'm cool with that. All right, you see, so you understand I'm a private <laughs> I'm a school. Kid. That's all. That's what we yeah. do here. No, but that, that's, yeah, Utah is, I think they're a serious, serious threat to at least make it out of the West. I don't know if I'm picking anybody to beat the Nets, the Brooklyn Nets, but I do think Utah can make it out of the West. Now, wouldn't that be amazing if Utah goes against the Nets? Because everyone is predicting that it's going to be the Lakers and Nets. Oh, that would be the funniest thing ever. I yeah. would laugh for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Me too. <laughs> so would I. Um, do you think that Utah is better than the Nets? Or you think they're, they're, no, they're getting I, close? I think right now, I think it, the Utah is the best team in the league. And just in terms of record, I'm going to be fair to them about their record. They're 26 and six, so I have to respect that. But the Nets, if if you had to pick the best team, like if you ignored the record and just said looking like right at a now. team, yeah, looking at a team, ignoring the record, all oh, the Nets are the best team because they have something no other team can can no other team can stop. Those yeah. three guys are Bobby Smurda back. Bobby Smurda is going to be at the next game. <laughs> that's, that's, and yo, that's crazy. That Brooklyn already going to be on tilt because right. Bobby got up. Yes. So you already know. If it, he shows it, up, it's a wrap. It's a, that's all it takes is for him to like perform at halftime, uh, the Smurda dance, the Smurda dance. It's going to be yeah, over. Yeah, that song is so it's old. Over. But if that song came on right now, no, everybody gets that's up. That's old. But, yeah. but because it's Bobby, because he came home, it'll go crazy. Like, so true. Crazy. You're so right. Yeah. Okay, so we all know, unfortunately, this week we heard about Tiger Woods. Yes. And he has no recollection. He has no idea what happened to him. So sad. And they said it was a pure accident. Do you mm. think he'll ever go back to playing golf? This is not football, so you can answer this question. No. I think no, you're not that... Gonna answer or no, he's not? No, I'm saying no, oh. he's not. I don't think he... I think he'll go... Golf is one of those sports where you can kind of play till you're like 90 or yeah, something like that leg. but so uh, that's why i think no he's already had the back issue for years and the back issue has been the reason we haven't seen him be the dominant tiger woods that he used to be 
and he still, I believe it was just a week or two ago, he was dealing with. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I don't even mean to laugh surgery. because we just said Bobby right. Smyrna, and then you said about a week ago, and then I'm thinking of about uh, a week ago. Of the other girl, Good the job, young, Jeff. the young ma. So Good it's job, like the whole. Jeff. All right, sorry, down, go. Yes, like about that. a week so, ago. Yes. Yeah, so I think he was dealing with back issues and because I think he was um, uh, debating whether he was going to be in the Masters. So just with all the injuries, he's in his 40s. I think he's in his 40s now. So with all the injuries, especially this one, you almost lost your life. I yeah. think Tiger is, and, and basically, and his, his resume is complete. I know he wants to chase Jack Nicklaus's record of, of major wins. I don't think he's right. going to catch it now. I think, you know, just for now, be with your family. But I think this will be one of those final wake up calls for him. Not to say that he was like needing one, but I yeah. think this will be a way to say. Well, this will be hey, like man. his second one because we had the like the kill the what the painkillers before. Yeah, and he bounced right. back, thank God, because, you know, in the media, yeah. we forgive all. And um, yeah. he proved himself again. But I just right. don't see after something so traumatic like that. Yeah, because yeah, he know. broke his leg and his ankle. I just think it's. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, you're the greatest. Most people consider Tiger right, Woods. We got great it. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, we got it. So rest up. Just go into the second phase that most athletes get into, that second life, so to speak. So Yes. Unfortunately, like Kobe tried, you know. Yeah. And Kobe was and, doing a great job. Yeah. That, and the so. first thing I thought was, um, thank God that we didn't get another Kobe when they said that yeah, yeah. they had to take the jaws to open up the car. I just yeah. said, thank God, because I mean, it's not the same sport, but it's still losing a, a goat. Yeah, it at is. At an early, it young is. age with family and kids and everything. That's right. Well, That's right. I want to thank you so much for being on my show. I don't know if you know this, but I mean, I saw you before in person. I've hung out with you in person, but there's something different about your voice when I hear you on the sports hit list. It annoys the hell out of me. What? I can't stand your voice. <laughs> Whenever you're on, I'm like, turn it off. But then I listen. So I don't know what effect you have. Like, you need to do a, like um, some kind of recording. Because I know you're also, you know, you're, you're, you preach in your church. I know they probably say to you, like, this man's annoying. But they go home and they're like, no. <laughs> what he said today really hit my soul. Yo, Deb, you are the first person that has ever described my voice as annoying. The, I literally the first it's person. It's annoying, people, but it's so powerful at the same no, time. That, <laughs> most people are always shocked by it. They're like, well, wh how are you like this thin guy with yes, this one yes, person? You sound like what God sounds like. <laughs> so maybe so that's the, why, because I hear God telling me like, don't eat that cookie. Be nice to Carl. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, one time, this is a true story. When I was working as a cable technician, some I, I went to a customer's house and the woman told me, it was, no, it was a little kid. And she was like 15 or something. She said, you sound like you're supposed to be a fat man or something like that. That's what she said to me. And I was like, oh what? Goodness. I, I was like, what is that? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? But Basically, everybody sees me, they hear my voice, and they expect it. Like, I don't know what you expect from people's voices. So you are the first person that told me my voice is annoying. I'm telling my wife, I'm going to tell Michelle that Deb said my voice is I, annoying. Like, not to be whatever I bet for your wife, you hit it with No, the, no, no, it's great. No, this no, is great. I was going to say, you hit it with that voice from the guy from Boys to Men. Yeah, you know, baby, I'm on my knees crying. <laughs> and she was like, oh, yes. Mike, amazing. Love yo, it. Yeah, and then when you talk to your, your kids, especially your son, you're like, yo, he ready to hear, you know what I'm saying? You don't even got to yell. That, that voice is already like instilled in them. They're like, oh my God. Yeah, sometimes they get nervous. Sometimes yes, they get nervous. But at the same time, I don't know. I tell Carl, I'm like, Mike's on your show today. And he's like, how do you know? I'm like, I hear the voice. But I listen. Oh, because you be in the room and you hear it with the <laughs> Yeah, and, but I listen. It's weird. I just want to I, let you know that. I, and yeah. also, a little birdie told me, I don't know if you know, but at the end of the show, I always have this bird, and it's just like... Is it the bird? Is it called? Yeah, Maybe it's a someone... green bird. And he oh, told me that bird? you used to rap. I did. I still oh, rap. Oh, you better bust... You, when I, I have a couple of drinks in me, I think I'm a rapper. I think Carl has told you this. Yes. I, yes. He's posting videos of you rapping. 
He's posting videos. He yeah, has. when I when I get a couple of drinks, I'm like Deb Star the rap. You know what I'm saying? But you want to? No, I still rap. I don't. I don't. Rec I don't record in the sense of I don't make music anymore. I I may have fe I featured on a song or two like a, a year or two ago on uh some of when I was uh, in Michigan. Uh, some of the the youth at at the church that I was in, they they do music and they was like Pastor Mike, we know you rap. So Wait, come now, do a Pastor song Mike, today. what were so, you rapping about? Like press, like the bread and the wine with Jesus? I'm not, I'm not like, <laughs> <laughs> like do I rap? Of course it's like gospel rap, so to yeah. speak, but I'm not as, you know, like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus here, Jesus, 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 oh yeah. No, it's a it's more of a pattern and you know, because I'm actually I rap, so it's like I I incorporated it in my um in, in a couple of the rhymes. So yeah, they let me feature on some songs with them. But in terms of my own music, no, I'm not, I'm retired in that way. Where I'm just I just enjoy it. I love the I've always been a writer, so I love writing music. I love writing rhymes, putting patterns yeah. together, seeing how it could be crazy and ridiculous in my mind. And then to other people, it's probably like, ah, oh, that's kind of weird. But <laughs> yeah, so it's been it's been a, it's fun for me. That's still cool. Like I said, I want to thank you so much for being on my little show here, the B Show. Um, please check out Pastor Mike. Some of the stuff that you do say is very uplifting, and it's so great that what you do for the youth. Um, and I'm so thankful that you and your family are all well in Texas. I don't know why you're in Texas wearing a New York Mets sweatshirt, but we'll let that slide. Listen, man, I'm going to be a Mets fan no matter what. Nah, once Listen, you leave, bro. You could go over I, there. The only thing no. that we care about is Texas is Beyonce. So that's the only thing that gives you a little and makes you That's all that helps like you. Here, listen, I'm always a New Yorker. You, I can't not be a New Yorker. People hear it in my voice, and they're like, "Oh, you from New York?" It's, it. I can't stop that. Man. Even, it's even, looking. um, what is it? The Texans they didn't even want JJ Watt, and he's from like that's what's happening down there, bro. Crazy stuff. I'm gonna be. I don't really care about football, Dad. I'm just keeping it on it. See, that's the voice. Thing. That's the voice he gives to his I, wife at thing. night. You know what I'm saying, baby? He's all good. No, I don't say <laughs> <laughs> That's you the voice that got the three kids. No, it's just, I'm not, yeah. not really no, a thing for me. You know what I'm but, saying? Um, that's how you get your wife to wash dishes. Come on, baby. That's not, no, it's not. You wash, <laughs> no, it's you wash not. Too. No, it's not, man. Uh, you know what I'm, I'm very I'll respectful, and, and I'll wash the dishes. Um, I do that. Carl, Sometimes. you heard that? No, Carl washed dishes. Let me not give it. Let me not. Give it, let me not play. Listen, with before we get off, I told Carlos all the. I told him all summer. Listen, I love you guys doing the whole challenge of whoever loses gets to buy the person food. Yeah. The video you did when y'all won, I think it was game two or three, and you said, uh, "Alexa, play Miami." Oh my God! I think everyone, that was like everyone's fake. <laughs> And, but you have mad swag. But you were so smooth. But you was like, Alexa, play Miami. And then it started playing and you started dancing. I was like, yo, this is the greatest video ever. Well, you know, it's funny Carl. that you say that. This, the reason why I got this show is because of those. Long yeah. story short, yeah, um, Errol, who, you know, has his whole network, he was like, who is that girl that you do these, the, the challenge that you did with the Boston versus mm -hmm. Miami? He was like, that's my wife. And he was like, she needs a show. And he was like, she does have one on Instagram. He's like, no, I need to put her on my network. This girl needs to like see, needs to be seen. And um, doing those challenges. And I told Carl, if you're, is you know, your shitty team makes it, let's do it again. And he's like, no. Because <laughs> I took all so that they, money. I took the all name, Errol. Yes. Thank you, Errol. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for giving Deb a show. This is for not like she Deb. He was right. You needed this. We needed this. We, uh, thank you so much. This. The people needed this. So I'm listen. I am grateful to be on this show. You I'm understand? grateful to have you excited. on this show. As soon as I got the electricity back, I text call. I said, "Yo, make sure you let Deb know I still want to be pull on." Up. Yeah, tell her. So thank you I really so much. You, thank you so you much. You were definitely on the top pickings. Everyone after this, you know, I don't, <laughs> <they> don't no. <laughs> I'm just kidding because I definitely I'm calling it right now. I want you, Gregor, Mr. Polius. I want you next. I'm calling that it would now. Be good. good dude. Greg's a good dude. Yes, and, and you, you, you gotta have me back. I'm gonna beg to be back too. I'm of text course. Call. Of course. And then I'll make sure it's all about football. 
No, then I'm not coming oh. back then. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Mike Miller. He will read you a lullaby. He'll tell you a gospel. <laughs> and in the end of the day, he'll tell you how much he hates the Lakers. <laughs> and LeBron James. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me your time. I hope everything works out for you in Texas. And you know, you always have a place to stay when you come to New York. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Deb. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You. Thank you. All right, guys. That is the end of the B Show. Thank you so much for my guest, the sibling Soray and Pastor Mike. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, 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 uh. I didn't say um, I said uh. And I just want to thank you all for watching me on my third episode. I can't wait to see you for the fourth. Next week, I'm going to have my best friend, um, Ziggy. And hopefully, uh, this gets out to Gregor and he will be on my show. doesn't even know that I want him. I just, just said it right now. Thank you so much. Um, if you don't know, the little birdie is here. And hopefully, he'll take me out to dinner. So enjoy your weekend be yourself be kind be blessed and most of all be true to yourself this is deborah voltaire kalan signing out bye it's the worldwide sports radio network